many of you are aware, we have been debating how to get at the very difficult and embarrassing and critical problem of sexual assault in our military. The best way to protect victims and realize more aggressive and successful prosecutions is by keeping the chain of the command, the chain of command in the process at the beginning of a, a criminal proceeding. Under, under this proposal, the victim has different rights than they had before. And, and I think they have more availability to be able to take care of the problem than they ever had before and, and more than any other proposal that's out there. But our military is a very important, um, very important to this country. We have commanders in the field that literally are directing people in life and death situations. We put full confidence in them to make the right decisions. There's no reason, there is no reason why we shouldn't continue to place that confidence in them when it comes to such a sensitive issue as military sexual assault. And then if they make the wrong decision, they can appeal it up the chain of command. I, I think anybody who knows my record, who knows I've been working at this for years, who understands my time in a courtroom, no one in the Senate has cried with more victims of sexual assault than I have. No one has looked more juries in the eye and said, put this man in prison for as long as the law allows. No one has had more experience with these kinds of crimes than I have. I understand that this is emotional, and I understand the narrative is pretty powerful here. I mean, candidly, uh, you know, this has been a narrative that's been developed that it's the victims versus the uniforms. That's just not true. That's not true. This is prosecutors and retired women who served decades in the military and a lot of victims and a lot of people who are thoughtful around here and have spent a lot of time at it believing that the way we're going to do this is going to provide the victims more protections, level the playing field in terms of their rights, take them outside the chain of command in terms of being able to be anonymous and not have to report to the chain of command, and more prosecutions. I myself, too, was a prosecutor. And so having had that experience in the civilian system, uh, we came to this uh, looking at it, understanding that this is a serious problem that must be addressed in our military. And working together, the provisions that are uh, in the proposal that came out of the Armed Services Committee certainly have strong protection for victims, including Special Victims Council. We wanted to make sure that women who have served in the military, some of whom have been victims um, at some point in their life of some sexual assault, uh, stepped forward and talked about their perspective. All of them believe that the negative unintended consequences of removing commanders entirely will have a bad impact on prosecutions and victims. We are not advocating maintaining a status quo. Changes do need to be made. We have some cracks in our processes and our systems, and we are actively, our services are actively working to correct those, and I think we're on the right track. Don't take the authority away from commands. Let's look at their processes that can support the commanders. There's no one to speak to what could actually happen if they took the commanders out of the process. Uh, I've seen it from both sides. Uh, I was a prosecutor. I was a victim witness liaison. I, was, uh, I lived with an infantry brigade in, in, in Korea. And um, I've seen this issue progress, and I've, I've watched it. And uh, I urge our political leaders and uh, the media to look at the facts and look at the potential impact for taking the commander out of the, out of the process. The protection of the command having responsibility and accountability in the long run is going to be much stronger for the victims.